What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me on yet another adventure to another sneaker event. Today, we are going to San Francisco, which is about an eight hour drive from San Diego. In San Francisco, I will be attending Undead Stock event, which is going to be an awesome time. I did one earlier this year and it was absolutely amazing. What I wanted to do for this episode was dive a little bit deeper into the actual process that goes into running one of these shows completely solo. Unfortunately, Lola is not going to be able to make it with me. I'm going to show you everything from the loading procedure to the driving, getting ready for the event, to packing everything back up and finally getting back home. Today is Friday, March 25th, and I'm actually gonna be heading about halfway up to San Francisco where I'll be spending the night with a buddy. So then that way I can break down my drive a little bit tomorrow and I don't have to leave super early in the morning. Now the first part of any sort of convention is the prep work. You gotta make sure that you have everything together and you get it loaded all properly. So let's get into the prep work and loading up the What's up, sir, doggy? How are you, bud? Dog knows I'm gonna be gone for the weekend, so he is definitely bugging out a little bit. So right now, I'm working on getting the car loaded. This is definitely one of the more boring parts of the episode and of any sort of sneaker convention process. When you guys see people that have hundreds of pairs of kicks at these events, just know that the amount of time that it takes them to actually load up is, is ridiculous. It really does take a really long time. I actually live on the third story of an apartment complex. So it takes me an especially long time because I have to do this flight of stairs that I'm about to be going on about five times per show. And that's just to load up the car. And then I've got to bring everything back up after the show. So hopefully I have one less load. But three flights of stairs, and typically I'm carrying these big ass boxes that have about 20 pairs of kicks in them, so they can weigh up to 70 or 80 pounds at times, which is uh, kind of a pain in the neck, quite honestly. Luckily, I do have my garage here, and this is the fourth show in four weekends that I've had. So most of my stuff is already stacked up in the garage, ready to go. Today, it's just about getting everything loaded into the car, which is what I'm about to show you. When you got a Jeep Wrangler, you can't fit a ton in the back, so you kinda gotta make do with the space that you got. Try to bring at least 70 to 80 pairs of shoes to every show if I'm able to. That's not always the case though. For this weekend show, I'm probably only gonna be bringing about 60 pairs of shoes, and that's because I gotta bring a tent and a couple of tables because none of that stuff will be supplied, and it's an outdoor event. This is the size of one of the boxes that I gotta bring down the stairs. Again, typically it's loaded up with like 20 pairs of shoes. This one, has had a couple pairs taken out because they've been sold over this past week. So I gotta fill it up with a couple more pairs. When you're working with space as small as mine, you gotta be a little bit careful with how you pack up your boxes too because you definitely wanna make sure that you can fit as much stuff per box as possible. So then that way you can maximize your space in the car and bring the most stuff that you're able to. The time lapse may make it look quick and easy, but half of that is just because I've just filled up the car so many times in the past that I have a good idea of how I like to set everything up. It typically takes me about a half hour to get loaded. That is like the most I've ever fit into my car at once. Holy smokes, there's a lot of shit in there. Three tables, got the canopy, I got probably 60 to 70 pairs of shoes, a box full of Pokemon cards. Now it's time to finish up, get a bag packed. I really am gonna be traveling light since I'm only gonna be on the road for maybe, I don't know, 36 hours or so. Crazy adventure going on right now, folks. I'll check in once I packed up and, and be in there. We're gonna play a not so fun game on this trip. It's called How Much the Sailboat Spend on Gas to Get to and from San Francisco. We've gotta fill up so I can make it as far as possible. 610. 610 a gallon. This is gonna be deadly. Like gas is gonna be brutal this entire trip and I know it's even gonna be worse than San Fran, which sucks. That used to be expensive for a full tank and that was like not even a half tank there. 
All right, guys, it's about 1.15. It's looking like it's going to be a little bit over three hours to get there, probably be there by about 4.30 or so. I got about 160 miles to go. We're starting off the journey at 99,228, so I might hit 100,000 miles. We're gonna do this right here too. We wanna see how many miles this trip actually takes because it should be close to 1,000. About to hit the road, let's fucking make it happen. All right, guys, still on the road right now. Hit some really bad patches of traffic. There have been some accidents and shit. There's been an extra 20 to 30 minutes added on to the trip. It's 2.58, so I've been on the road for about two hours. You can see right there, I've only done 94 miles. I'm not going terribly fast, I'm not going terribly slow. It's just these patches of traffic are like stop and go. And then all of a sudden it opens up for a little while. It's just more annoying than anything. So yo, this is the traffic that I've been dealing with for over a half hour now. Fucking 405 rush hour on a Friday. It's not where you wanna be at all. I still have like another 10 miles of this traffic too. It's gonna take me probably, oh God, at least a half hour to go those 10 miles. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. All right guys, so obviously I didn't get any footage upon when I landed. Right now we got 515. Saturday, March 26th. Happy Air Max Day to everybody out there. I'm about to head up to San Francisco from Westlake Village. It's about a six hour drive. Got a long ride ahead of me. I got to gas up before we go anywhere. Starting off today, 99,386 miles. We've already done 158 miles on the trip. Let's see what we're about to tack on the car today. The drive up to San Francisco took me on the five north. And it was actually a pretty nice drive because the entire way the roads were clear and I got to wake up with the sun. All right guys, so I am approximately halfway there I wanna say right now. I got another like 270 miles left to go. I gotta fill up on some gas right now. Crazy enough, I found right off the highway a gas station that has gas for less than $6. 566 a gallon and for some reason I'm excited that this is the price because everywhere else it's like 670 i've seen on the highway it's crazy pulling over in some spots it's legitimately 680 per gallon which is out of control let's find out how much this one is going to cost me So are you kidding me? What was the first trip? I think it was like 45.80 plus another $90. I've had to fill up like a tank and a half so far. It's cost me 135, 136 bucks. I mean, I'm still gonna have to fill up at least probably another full two tanks, quite honestly. Man, I'm gonna be looking at like 300, $350 worth of gas this trip. Time to hit the road. We'll check in once we get there, I guess. Luckily, I was able to make it up to San Francisco on that tank refill, but once I got there, I was running on E. Luckily, it was a beautiful day out, the sun was shining, and it was nice warm weather for me as well. All right, yo, I just pulled up. 10.49, I gotta get unloaded and shit, man. It's gonna be hectic, I can already tell. Whew. I'm sweating right now, so I gotta, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. What's up, boss man? What's up, brother? How are you? You're gonna be right over there next to Flip It. Busy, busy. SF. Over yeah. on the left side, yeah, right there? Right here, right, right on his left. Okay, cool. And then so luckily, I knew the guys that were actually running the event, but I also found that it was very important to make friends with the guys that were vending in the stand directly next to me. What's going on, guys? We're gonna be neighbors today. Oh, yeah. I'm a sailboat. Sailboat? I'm sailboat, yeah. I'm Vinny. Vinny, nice to meet you, Vinny. Brandon. 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 Nice to meet you guys. I'm from San Diego. How was that drive like? Yeah, about, I stopped uh, with some buddies in Westlake Village last night, so that cut off a little bit of time. It was probably only like six and a half this morning. I'm doing the ride back tonight, so it's gonna, it's a lot of driving for one day, but. Yeah, he's got power through it, dude. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
All right, I'm gonna get unloaded, but yo, I'm gonna be rolling solo today. So if there's any chance that if you, you need guys to might, the bathroom or something, yeah, I'm yeah, bro. cool, cool. Appreciate that, guys. Appreciate that immensely. For every single show that I vend at, I make a point to meet my neighbors that are also vending next to me. I found that this really helps to establish some really good connections and communication. And if you can establish some good rapport, typically if you guys ever run into any sort of issues, then you'll be able to have your neighbors there to support you as well. Also, being able to look out for one another during the course of the show is always an added benefit. All right, two big questions for you guys. Number one, what did you do for parking? Oh, uh, right here. Parking, yeah. So, oh, street parking? Right here. Okay, cool, cool, got you. Number two, would you mind taking an eye on my stuff just as I go to park? Yeah, yeah. Cool, thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's pretty light right now, so I'm not really too worried about it, but you know. Cool, cool, appreciate it, man. I wish that this time lapse did a better job of capturing how long it actually took to find parking because it was a little bit of an anxiety provoking experience. All of the street parking had been taken so I had to go down the block and it actually took me a solid 15 minutes to find a spot. No. Nah. Hey, you rolling, right? Just you did? No, just me. I'm rolling solo. You always roll solo. My girl stays with the dog, man. To be honest. Dog wouldn't like that long of a ride, so. After getting my vendor pass, getting unloaded, and getting the car parked, I could finally chill out a little bit and just take my time setting up. Luckily, I was able to establish plenty of time to set up all of my stuff, and when you're rolling solo, that can take an especially long time. Luckily, my neighbors were really chill, and they also helped me to set up my canopy. Yo, what's up guys? Already set up. The GoPro died about halfway through setup, so I was unable to get a ton of footage of it, but I got some and you guys were able to see that. Unfortunately, fucked up yet another tent. This is the second one I broke this year. That's okay though, we got plenty of use out of this one. Let's take a quick look around. The show has kind of got started, I think like 10 minutes ago. Doors kind of opened, I don't really know. I'm gonna show you guys the stand real quick. Already sold a pair of Wave Runners, so that's kind of nice. Let's check it out right quick. One of the things that we started to notice over the past several shows is that utilizing your vertical space at the stand can actually help to draw quite a bit of attention. So that's something that we've been doing with Pokemon cards at nearly every single show that we've attended in this year's events. The rest of the table I set up from small on the left side to large on the right side and I keep all of my lower quality stuff in the front and all of my higher quality stuff up on the top shelves closer to me. I find that this is a pretty good setup because then that way people ask before they touch your high quality stuff, whereas the lower quality stuff that I'm not so concerned about, people don't mind picking that up because it's a little bit closer to them. Since I was set up a bit before the show actually got started, I was able to cruise around and take a look at what District 6 had to offer. Never having vended at District 6 before, I noticed that it was a little bit of a smaller location than I had expected, but there was still ample space for a couple dozen vendors. As you can see, the Undead Stock crew came in with some heaters on their table, and apparently they actually sold off a bunch of pairs of really expensive kicks. We also had level up kicks in the building, and they had a great supply of some of the more current day heat. And we also had this other sneaker vendor who unfortunately I wasn't able to catch their name and they didn't have any displays that actually had their name on it. So shout out to you guys for such a cool supply of sneakers at this show. Um, sorry I didn't get your name to shout you out. And then coming back over towards the stand, checking out with Flip It SF, our awesome neighbors for this show. And they also had a couple pairs of kicks, as well as some Pokemon cards and some other trinkets and sneaker related knickknacks. As the show got started, I noticed that foot traffic wasn't especially heavy, but luckily everybody that was coming through the show was stopping by the booth to check things out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it is approximately four o'clock p.m. on March 26, Undead Stock events. We're having quite the day so far. Only made a couple sales here at the event. Foot traffic has been a little bit slower than the last Undead Stock events, but the pairs that I've sold, I've sold for some pretty good money and I'm very happy about that. We sold a couple packs of Pokemon cards, not like a ton of them, not as much as we have been doing at shows recently, but doing well. We got a couple of the Undead Stock crew right here. I'm both about to buy all my Pokemon cards. <laughs> Hopefully. What did he say? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna buy his Pokemon cards. 
Shout out to the boy sailboat. Hey. Coming out from San Diego. My guy, thank you. We'll definitely make it down there. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for having me, bro. The Undead Stock crew always shows love to me and that's one of the reasons why i keep coming back i show love where love is given and these guys are always showing it always reciprocating it's always amazing even if sales are a little bit slow the vibe is incredible i'm having a great time out here and it's really really well worth it uh, let's show you guys what's going on what the scene is like and what we have here at district 6 san francisco for undead stock event towards the end of the event things really slowed down substantially so I decided to take a cruise through and see what some of the other vendors had to offer because there was a really great selection of different apparel, items, sneakers, and more. We had triple 3Js and they had an amazing selection of some vintage apparel, a bunch of single stitch stuff. Slug rugs with a dope selection of customized rugs for some insanely fair prices. I was an especially big fan of their Pokemon selection, but they definitely had a huge selection of some dope rugs that catered to a bunch of different audiences. Obviously the neighbors, Flip It San Fran, and they had a whole bunch of sneaker related paraphernalia, some Pokemon cards, some hype clothing, and some kicks as well. And I also might mention that the kicks that they were carrying were super high quality dunks from a throwback era. Cruising a little bit past the stand, we were able to come up on Dizzy Kicks, who had a really dope array of some Air Max trading cards, which were super impressive, especially on Air Max Day. I saw a dope bubble display next to the Undead Stock stand, and then Stance Socks. Hey! hey. Stance right here. Stance Socks, what up? If they're not stance, they're just socks. You're getting some fresh trims over here too, huh? That's what's up. It's about to be looking real good. Don't worry, I'm back. <laughs> Excuse me. What's up guys, how we doing? Chilling, chilling. Your favorite take pictures? Yeah, absolutely, please. Take as many as you want. Tag me in all of them. <laughs> I was gonna say, you look super familiar. The new balances. Nice, nice, there he is. So after cruising through and checking everybody's stand out, the day was starting to come towards a close and I had to start packing up a little bit. Luckily, the last hour of the day was actually pretty jam packed with a lot of people coming through the booth and I was actually able to sell a couple pairs which was really nice because I cleared out some space in the car and I didn't have to bring everything home. You can see that traffic was pretty good but unfortunately it was only like two or three sales in the last hour even though I wish it had been a couple more. As I started to pack up, I still had a couple of people that leave through towards the end of the day and ended up buying a pair or two but overall sales were relatively slow and even Pokemon card sales were a bit slow as well which was kind of unfortunate packing up luckily went pretty quickly and I was able to do that all alone without any sort of help even for the canopy which was real nice as I got everything packed up and closed out with the crew it was time to go pick up my car which again was a few blocks away and uh, had been kind of hard to find a parking space for initially. Luckily, loading everything back into my car only took a few minutes and I had a couple pairs of watchful eyes over all of my stuff, so I felt really secure. Guys, show is done and uh, it was pretty cool. Definitely a little bit less busy than the last UnDS event that I went to about a month ago, but still went pretty well. Sold a couple pairs of Wave Runners, sold a pair of Easy Quantum, sold a pair of Dunks, sold some Pokemon cards too, and then I had a pretty successful Whatnot stream while I was here. Everything is all packed up, and I'm about to head out in just a minute, gotta gas up the car, but I wanna say goodbye to the Undead Stock fam, and uh, say thank you. All right, man, I had to come through. Sir. Say thank you. Yes, sir. Is there anything that you would like to say to the people about oh, Undead man. Stock? No, I appreciate Sailbo for coming down, man. He always shows so much love, so I want to give him love back. <laughs> right back at you, man. No, you guys exactly. have always been great to me. Uh, we're, we're, on, we're on Undead Stock events on IG. I have more stuff coming within the next year. Uh, another event in summer. And next year is going to be even bigger. Nice. Lock on. Appreciate it. 6.07. 6.07 p.m. 
It's supposed to be about seven and a half hours to get home. We're supposed to be getting home at around 1.30 a.m. Hopefully I can cut off at least a half hour. We're aiming for that one o'clock slot. Gotta stop and get gas and that's gonna happen at least twice on this journey. I gotta do one real quick because I am on E right now and then I'll definitely have to do one at least halfway. Here's to crossing the fingers. We're about to hit 100,000 miles on the car. About to hit 1,000 miles on this trip alone. It's about time we get started, so, uh, so let's hit the road. All right, guys, this gas purchase is going to hurt the most out of any of them on the trip. 6.62 a gallon. And I have to do a full fucking tank. God, this fucking blows. Thank you, San Fran. This is like one of those times that I don't know if it's worth it to like drive around and find cheaper gas, but I really just want to hit the road, honestly, and I think. One oh six, fucking a hundred and six dollars to fill up my tank. That's ridiculous. If you guys remember, our total was at $135.80, if I'm not mistaken. So now we are at $241.80. That sucks. Let's hope I can make it pretty far on this tank. been a long time in the making. I drove this car off the lot in May 2014 with 42 miles on it. And I am about to turn over to 100,000 miles traveled in my Jeep. Let's go! Woo! All right. All right, guys. Uh, Final stop, as far as gas is concerned. It said 523 on the sign. But that's the cash price, so. 543 is the actual price. I need to put in a full tank. We are currently at $241.80 gas-wise. Let's see where we end up. It caps me, it caps me at 75 bucks. So I have to do another transaction to fill it up the rest of the way. It's, it's annoying as shit. That's crazy, I thought it capped my gas, but apparently my tank was full, so I fucking over poured. Oh God, it's the first time I've ever done that shit. Been driving for 15 plus years and I've never fucking overdone it. Oh my God, my whole car smells like gasoline. Oh, I just wanna get home now. 240 miles left to go. I shaved off a little bit of time, but these gas stops have been killing my time. So hopefully I'll be able to shave some minutes off. It's saying 1.30 right now. If I can get home a little bit before then, I will be a very happy camper. Uh, but now I gotta deal with the gas smell for the rest of the ride. That's shitty. So, oh well, what do you do? Here we go. 109. 109 people. That is my official clock in for arriving home. A grand total of 1,053.1 miles traveled on this trip. <sighs> seven, seven hours to get home. A little bit over seven hours. It was a long ride home, man. Gas stops just killed me. Home safe and we'll, uh, we'll check in, unload tomorrow and kind of do a little recap on the weekend so you guys know exactly how everything went down. All right, guys, that brings us to the conclusion of this episode of Sailboat's Sneaker Conventions. Obviously, I didn't take the time to show my unpacking process because it's pretty simple. It just consists of me walking up and down stairs a whole bunch of times, carrying a bunch of heavy packages, and I figured that I could spare you guys. Like I mentioned in the disclaimer of the video, I don't recommend vending solo at any sort of event, especially when it's so far away. I personally have been able to do so because I've created such a great network of amazing people around me. So every time I go to a sneaker convention, I always make sure I know at least a few people that are 
are gonna be there. That way, when I do have to leave my stand, I have somebody that's going to be able to keep a watchful set of eyes over all of my stuff. Big shout out to the guys at Flip It San Fran, as well as the guys from Undead Stock Events that made me feel absolutely secure throughout the entirety of this show and helped me out when it came time to park my car and get my car so then that way all of my stuff stayed safe throughout the entire process. I had a really, really good time there and I met some amazing people. Unfortunately, sales weren't especially strong, but it was a little bit of a smaller venue and it wasn't focused specifically on sneakers. It was amazing getting to see the guys in the Undead Stock crew and I really appreciate all of the love and support that you guys have shown me through the past couple years. If you guys enjoyed the content of today's video, please let me know by taking the 10 seconds to click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Those two things only take a matter of seconds to do and it goes a long way in helping to support the channel in any sort of future content. If you guys have any sort of suggestions for future videos, make sure you let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to hear what you guys want to see from these shows and I would love to hear some of your input. If you guys want to stay up to date with all of the different items I have for sale and all of the different projects that I have going on, make sure that you check out the website at www.sailboatsupplies.xyz. I can also be found on social media at Sailboat Supplies. Thank you to everybody that came through this video and checked out the last couple of sneaker convention videos that I put out. I really appreciate you sticking around until the cold, bitter end of this video. You guys already know, I'm Sailboat and I'm out of here.